questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let, let me uh, first also. If we're able to secure a comprehensive understanding, we will structure nuclear-related sanctions relief in a way that is phased, proportionate, and reversible. We will need to see verified steps on Iran's part before sanctions are lifted. And we believe that powerful U.S. legislative sanctions should not be terminated for years to come so that we continue to retain important leverage years into a deal. And to give us this opportunity to discuss our efforts to reach a comprehensive solution. To this. Indeed, as Secretary Kerry testified not long ago, any agreement will have to pass muster with Congress. Those were his words. Yet that commitment has been muddied by the administration's insistent and re insistence in recent weeks that Congress will not play a role. And that's not right. Congress built the sanction structure that brought Iran to the table. And if the president moves to dismantle it, we will have a say. Uh, are in there as well. That's what makes me nervous, because once you lose that leverage, it's very, very hard to get back. Uh, the truth is the size of the hole that Iran is in across almost any indicator you look at is far deeper than the relief that's on the table. Uh, even the substantial relief should Iran make good on all of the commitments that are uh, being set out by the negotiators. We're talking about uh, a hole that could be described in, in one sense as a $200 billion hole, which are the losses that we assess they've suffered since 2012 due to sanctions. Also the fact that limits placed on Iran's nuclear program as part of the final agreement now. Whether the ultimate number of centrifuges uh, as, is reduced from night, the, close to 20,000 to 6,000 or 7,000 or 3,000, whatever the number is, what will happen to the rest? Will any of them be dismantled? Will they go into a closet? Will they go into an attic? Will they be readily available for Iran at the expiration of the deal? All of that is uh, subject to the negotiations. That remains to be determined. I think you're, you're right to point uh, in general to the centrifuges. Obviously, that's a key component, but it's also important to understand uh, it's not the only component. I understand. I understand, and I only have a little time, but I, I would encourage, I would, I would suggest that if, if the ultimate deal doesn't require that a single one of the centrifuges is dismantled, it's going to make it awfully difficult for a lot of us to be comfortable that this is a, um, a serious enough step to prevent them from breaking out. Thank you, Mr. Engel. We go now to Eliana Ross-Layton. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman.